Okay, so we have a science question from Rebecca. And she says, hi guys, I have a chemistry question for you. I need help balancing this equation. And the equation is Fe plus H2O. Oh. And then a little arrow. I'm gonna need one of you guys in a second. Um, then it converts to Fe 304 plus H2. Awesome, so we're balancing an equation. So another way to say the equation it looks like is uh, it's got, it's iron plus water yields iron oxide and hydrogen gas. So uh, I'm going to have, is Nate doing it for me? He's yeah, I'm writing this down. To. If I remember right, I should leave a little space for you at the front. Oh, Nate, these, you were right? so good. So Nate's going to leave yeah. a little space in front of each of the uh, chemical symbols. And we will balance it with him. So there he is. And, and again, I think one thing that, that, Stumps us sometimes with chemistry right. is there's more than one way to say this, right? Uh, Tears just said it perfectly. Fe plus H2O, uh, arrow, uh, Fe3O4 plus H2. But we can also say it um, in, in plainer English, which is just Fe is iron. So iron plus H2O water yields. Usually we read that arrow as yields. Uh, iron oxide is, is that chemical right there. And then hydrogen gas is the last one. So when we're balancing equations, the goal is uh, we want to make sure that we can figure out exactly how much of each kind of chemical is going to be created. And uh, because we know that matter cannot be created or destroyed, something that we really harp on in chemistry class, uh, whatever number of atoms of every chemical that we have on the left side of our equation should correspond to the number of atoms of those types we have on the right side of the equation, on the uh, product side of our equation. So. Um, this is how I would solve this. So the first thing that I would do is I would look at it and I would say, okay, so uh, I noticed that on the left side of my equation I have one iron, or just iron by itself, and on the right side I have three iron. Um, so I'm probably going to end up needing three iron. So I'll go ahead and put a three in front of the Fe on the left side. Just a big three right there, right? Big old three. All right. So um, what Nate just put in is what we call a coefficient um, in Nate and Becca's class, they use coefficient all the time, probably, likely. Yep. Um, Every day. In science, we use it a little bit less. Sometimes we use it to refer to parts of a particular equation. But in chemistry, uh, we talk about uh, balancing coefficients, and they're these numbers. So Nate's going to put them in red for us. Uh, so again, uh, uh, we've got one iron on the left originally, but we just put a three in front of it. So now we have three iron molecule molecules on the left which corresponds to, on the other side, we've got Fe3, three iron molecules right there, so we're even in terms of iron. So the next thing I'm looking at is my hydrogen, is our, it's, it's in balance. I have H2O on the left and H2 on the right. Even though on the left the H2 is combined with oxygen, there's still two on the left and two on the right, so those are cool for now. But I also notice that there's only one oxygen on the left and there's four on the right. So to compensate for that, I'm gonna have Nate put a four in front of my H2O. So that's going to throw off, now we have too many hydrogens, right? And now our hydrogens have been thrown off, right? So originally our hydrogens were in balance, but since we have four waters now, four H2Os, I have to multiply that coefficient by whatever, uh, or multiply any of the chemicals there by the coefficient. So since there's two hydrogens in H2O, and I have four molecules of H2O, that means I have a total of eight hydrogens. Over on the other side, I already have two hydrogens in, on the product side. I'm going to have Nate put a coefficient of 4 in front of that H2, balancing us out. So now I have uh, 3 iron plus 4 water yields. And I'm going to have Nate put a 1 there in front of my iron oxide. One uh, mole of, of iron oxide and 4 moles of hydrogen gas. So I went through that kind of quickly in, in a sort of simple way where I just, I looked at the left and I looked at the right to try to determine what do I need to add to each side to, to make sure that the sides are balanced. At some point here, I'm going to have to bring in, I'll have to think about a more complex uh, balancing question because there's a way to solve it through a system of equations. And I think that typically when we get into higher level chemistry, we need to use systems of equations to balance these. So I may, I'll bring in a more complicated one someday and have you guys help me out with that. 
Okay. That's interesting because I was actually wondering about that. Like, yeah. Right. It seems like a lot of this is just kind of plugging stuff in, playing hoping it works out. It. If it doesn't, and then making some adjustments. And I think yeah. that really that's the I'm fastest way it. to do this type of oh. a problem that we just looked at. Mm -hmm. So a problem that is is so simple and that has just very few chemicals like that. But if you have a really complex chemical being combined with another complex chemical and yielding two or three other complex chemicals, it may really behoove you to look at it from a systems of equation standpoint. Hmm. So again, I'll, I'll bring in an example of that uh, in one of these weeks coming up. Can I ask I really you one other question? So sure. you put a one in front of the iron, was it iron, di iron oxide? Iron oxide, uh-huh. Now, a lot of times in math when we have coefficients of one, we just don't put them there. Nice. Are you putting it there just to be clear? That there is a one there, or Absolutely. if you were doing this, would you always write that? No. So I mean, let's be clear. If you're if you're a chemist working in in a real field, mm -hmm. uh, maybe you work for a city water, and you're you're testing uh, uh, chemicals in the water, you may you may run equations, but you're probably not adhering to some sort of really strict right. standard. Normally, you probably wouldn't put a one there. Okay. But as a chemistry teacher and somebody that's always thinking from the perspective of I want my students to lay out exactly what they know. Mm -hmm. To me, a blank there could indicate that they're not exactly sure. So right. I always require that they put the one. Okay. Mm, that makes sense. Yeah.